LA, I want to say thank you very much. My special recording at the Dynasty Typewriter on Wednesday, December 14th is sold out. I can't thank you all enough for it. We're going to have a fun time. I also hear that they don't serve alcohol. So, hey, maybe you want a pregame, y'all. I'll see you on the 14th. I want to make a very special announcement here. I'm excited to say that um, I have the Crab Feast podcast back under my control. Okay, so... Uh, it's every artist's goal to get their, you know, property back to them. We got it. All right. So um, if you don't know about the Crab Feast, um, but a lot of you do, I want to say this. I'm on the road at meet and greets. People come up, been rocking with you since the feast, man, the feast, the feast. The Crab Feast is a podcast that I did with Jay Larson. It's a storytelling podcast, audio only. Um, we did it for about seven and a half years. There's 350 some episodes. Hell, if you, if you listen to two a week, it would take you three and a half years to get through it. Um, but it's a phenomenal library that I'm very proud of. Um, it's what, um, preceded the honeydew for me. Um, and it's got all the same favorite guests you love. Segura, Burt Kreischer, Bill Burr, Christina P., uh, you name it. There's and they're all different stories too. So if you love the honeydew, you got to check out the crab feast. Um, subscribe to it today. It's still getting a ton of downloads already. There's an active community on Facebook that goes through every episode, uh, and it, it's been almost gone for four years now. So um, feasters, let them know. Uh, honeydew fans, if you are looking for, you're all caught up on a honeydew and you're like, what else can I listen to? I'm telling you, go listen to the crab feast. It is a fantastic, fun, uh, storytelling podcast. You know, there you'll get like, man, I got this weird ghost story and a near death and a marriage story and a this where that's what, you know, I, the honeydew for me was the crab feast needed to have a baby. And I just focus on highlighting the low lights here. So Go check it out. It's available everywhere you get podcasts. It's audio only, like I said. Subscribe. Um, join the fan pages. Have fun with it. I'm going to be promoting it every week here on the Honeydew now that it's uh, back in, in control here. So I'm very excited about that. Thank you, Feasters. Thank you, Honeydew fans. Enjoy the feast. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pan Studios. I'm Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I want to say thank you, like I always do every week. Thank every single one of you for your support, for subscribing. Hit that subscribe. If you're watching YouTube, just hit the damn subscribe button. It's a free way to help the show, all right? And if you got to have more, then you got to check out the Patreon. It's the Honeydew with y'all where I highlight the lowlights with y'all. And uh, y'all have the wildest fucking stories. I say it every week, and every week a new one pops up. It's five bucks a month. There's no tiers, levels. We're not T-shirt cannon and shit. It's just five bucks, all right? If you sign up for a year, you get over a month free, and you're getting a honeydew a day early. You're getting it ad-free, and you're getting it at no additional cost, all right? Tickets for all uh, tour dates are on my website at ryansickler.com. We got Chicago, November 11th and 12th, Grand Rapids, December 9th and the 10th. All right, that's the biz there, y'all. You guys know what we're doing over here. We're highlighting the lowlights. I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. Today, very excited to have this guest here. First time on The Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rich Voss. Welcome to The Honeydew, Rich. This is... Uh... This is too professional for me. All right, like, like, hey, hey, listen. All right, this it is, looks all right, like it. All right, already, I'm at, I go, why am I here? I'm out of place. Our fucking podcast, we we tried Patreon, and we lasted about six months. We go, we can't do another one of these. Another we can't, one, we yeah. can't do two of them. Uh, we're like every every like uh, every like every week, when do you want to do it? I don't know. I don't want to get up. You know, like this is a studio. You got a uh, logo. You got fucking cups and shirts. It's just, it's, let me tell you something. If my wife and I are not fighting on our podcast, then it's not a podcast. You know, our best one is when I made her cry. Anyhow. <laughs> well, to promote that podcast. <laughs> no, it's called my, it's called my wife hates me. 
you know, it's anywhere you can find a podcast, bus terminals, uh, you know, whatever. My wife, hey, it's really funny, uh, you know. <clears throat> Mike, I have my. I'll tell you. Well, a story. Tell them who your wife is in case they don't know who Bonnie is. Oh, uh, Bonnie McFarland. Yeah, Bonnie who's McFarlane. fucking hilarious. She's on fire. She's she, hilarious. She just sold like two TV shows. She's rewriting a movie. All executive. right. She was an executive producer on on a Netflix show in a twenty uh, something. You know, her career is. On. We have the same manager, <laughs> so he called me one day, and I go, "Oh, good, something good's happening, right?" And he calls me. I go, "Oh, I wonder what's up," because he never calls me. He goes, you have Bonnie's banking information? <laughs> I, I, went, I went from a fucking headliner to an assistant, all right? I stink. So, you know, uh, you know I, got my, I got my seventh album coming out. It's called Rich Voss 7. I think it'll come out in two, three weeks, November. And I have a special that I shot a couple of years ago. It's coming out. It's going to be on like all these streaming platforms like Pluto, Roku. But it's cool. I shot it at a twelve step convention. I love that. It, it no one's ever done it. It's so cool. The Bonnie directed the opening scene. It's so fucking cool. Be at my my you know my stage behind me looks like a twelve step meeting. Has all the signs, the coffee pots, the donuts, chairs, and uh, no one. Do you one's, know uh, Mick Betancourt? Do you remember no. Mick? Mick's a Chicago guy. He's a really good comedian, writer, producer. Uh, but he used to do a show in the Valley. And it was, uh, f I can't remember how many years running, but it was at an AA because he was clean and sober. And it was at an AA um, meet, uh, hall. And the it was open to, you know, the, what do you call it? Patients. I don't oh, know. Yeah, what, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? The patrons. I don't know. The alcoholics and the users and shit. Yeah. And it was the best fucking show. It was oh. so fun. They, those people have done the wildest shit you could eat. You couldn't even imagine. So yeah. hearing you talk about your stuff and they didn't care if you talked about drinking or drugs. They're like fucking been oh. there, been there. And they, they, you know, you could go dark and low on them because they've been there. It was so fucking fun. Yeah. It's, I've done a lot of conventions. I've done some with, you know, 2000 people. Uh, I did. Damn, really? 2000. Convent, big conventions, yeah. you know. Uh, a cool thing I did, I got a call. They were having a drug awareness uh, concert next to the Washington Monument. Mm -hmm. And they called me to host it. I guess I got to the V's. And uh, <laughs> so they called me to host it, right? <laughs> and I, uh, like I... I hosted Woodstock 99. Did you see that documentary that's out? The three I, saw that I, I started watching it and I fell asleep. I'm not going to lie. I was on in the first 15 minutes. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going, let's go crazy. Let's go. I hosted that for three days. Not the, there was two. Like a side stage thing no, or I, something? No, the second biggest. There was okay. the East Stage and West. Anyhow, so I've done some big outdoor events, but this one. That's the one everyone set everything on fire. And yeah, shit, but that right? was yeah. the other stage. They asked me to come host that. I said, no way. I'll stay on my and my stage has sometimes had fifty, seventy thousand people. I had them all. I had about seventy thousand people at the count of three. I go say hi to my daughters, Jessica and Ellen. And I have it on tape. They're all y'all. Hi, Jessica. Hi, That's Ellen. Nice. Like, so uh, anyhow, so I did this big event in D.C. There was a uh, eh, probably fifteen thousand, uh, and I got to do material. I did like five or ten. A lot of people in recovery. It was just a drug awareness. Concert: Steven Tyler, Cheryl Crow, this band, The Fray, and whatever. It was cool. Uh, so I, but you know, also too, my career. Two weeks ago, I was working in Kenosha, Wisconsin, and I, I wish it was a parade. I was working in Kenosha, Wisconsin. So before I go on, the the club owner, can, you're not going to do that many f bombs. And I'm like, oh, anybody that says that, that's still a thing. There's, it, it, to me, like, first of all, I know, like, my seventh album is sparkling clean because I want to get it on more uh, stations on Sirius. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I could be cleaned, whatever. I could do whatever the fuck I want. So he goes, no F-bombs. or yeah, or, But why? I don't know. He's an was old fuck. Was there a certain group out there he was worried about offending I don't, he's or trying to get, they're all, I, look, he's an old guy. He does a radio show in Kenosha, him and his wife. It's, he introduces me. Oh, uh, this week we have Rich Voss, two-time Oscar winner. 
I wrote on two Oscars. If I won two Oscars, you think I'd be at your fucking club at, at the fucking Holiday Inn in Kenosha, you fucking jamoke? All right? <laughs> fucking two-time Oscar winner. Look, <laughs> look who we have on our fucking fly-by-night radio show. So that fucking week, that Friday, now he has two, <laughs> he has two rooms at this hotel. One gigantic ballroom, mm -hmm. and then he has a nice size that would be perfect. It's like Woodstock, bro. Yeah, He's perfect. got his west and yeah. east, bro. Yeah, perfect room. So it it wasn't it wasn't enough to fill the big room, and he lets people see themselves, right? So it's a big opening horseshoe in the middle. So that week he decides they're going to sell food at the club. He's going. So as you walk in, he had all these samples, but people didn't see him as they walked in because they were you know, samples. In the middle of my show, he has the waitresses passing out samples. -uh. Of, I go, I go. Is this what am I working fucking Costco? What is this a wedding? I right, and I'm yelling at the waitresses, stop! And they, <laughs> I've never you know, heard. They're passing like, like people. Hey, do you want a little <laughs> sample of pastry? You fat slob! And uh, I lost it. And. F bombs. There was, I, 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 I forgot. I forgot uh, about that. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, really? How am I not going to curse when you're passing out food? Like, you know, and I, I got off stage. I yelled. So, like, you do some of these gigs that are the greatest. Well, I just called out the comedy club. It was up in uh, Vancouver. They got the, which is nice. They give the terminal to each table to pay their bill so that the waitress isn't going back and forth. Great. But the fucking thing beeps so fucking loud. And so you're just hearing beep, beep, beep. I I was I was like, is someone having a medical emergency right it's now? Hilarious. Are you already fucking down there? Dude? Like for real, are you okay? And they're like, I'm just paying my bill. I was like, wait, that's something that the club guy I was like, of course. Uh, it's of humble. course a comedy club would give the fans something that would be louder than their fucking phone. It's of course they would. Oh no, they're and there's hundreds of them going off. I, you know, I'm doing it at like least fireworks. I'm doing at least an hour wherever I go. Twenty minutes are dropping the fucking checks. <laughs> Twenty. I go listen, you fucking idiots. You could sell at least two more rounds and make your money because that's their their job is to sell wings and fucking drinks. While that's the dance. difference when you. And I love doing clubs. Don't get me. I love comedy clubs. That you know, I and I I like theaters too, but it's a whole different vibe. You know, comedy club. I sit on a stool and I bring them. You know what I mean? And and then when they're dropping, you know, people like I, I'll be. You know, people are on their phones, and I'm like, what the fuck? They're trying to figure out the bill. You know, so whatever. It, it, it's a business we're in. All right. Well, you let know, me ask you this question because we could sit here and bitch about comedy. All I, I day. love it. I love I doing do too. Spin. But I you love know, it. so let me ask you this: You decide to do this in. Uh, at a, at a rehab at an AA, your st your special I'm talking about. Well, no, what? Yeah, it was at a at a what? It was at a convention. Okay, at a convention. This yeah, is the special, a twelve step right? convention. But did you pick that because you had gone through this? Your like, is that something that really resonates with you, and is something well, you wanted to do to help? And no, I don't want to help anybody. <laughs> I, uh, uh, no, I take me well, back to the beginning. Let's well, talk about all, you. First of all, I got thirty six years clean. Wow, congrats. Thirty six years. I did it for you and this and this podcast. Yeah, man. Thank uh, you. We've been waiting, bro. I'm I said you. not till he's thirty six <laughs> deep, bro. <laughs> I said <laughs> make sure he comes ringed up too, man. Yeah, no, listen, <laughs> you definitely uh, listen, have the listen, most listen. rings <laughs> of anyone listen, who's I'm ever a, been I'm on this. I'm a fucking headliner, bitch. <laughs> These, these aren't middle rings. <laughs> They're not feature rings. No, are you kidding me? I, every now and then I'll let a feature touch them. But <laughs> here, touch my ring. Let me touch <laughs> No, you're, uh, yeah. you're a co headliner. So <laughs> uh, I was I was a fucking drug. I the night before I went, do you used to, you know, when I in the 80, 80s doing there was one nighters all over in Jersey. I'm from Jersey. I live in Connecticut, New York. I mean, one nighters like they were going, you know, I would do one nighters. Where I was closing back then, I wasn't a headliner, but I was the closer. You know, Chris Rock would be in the middle, Ray Romano, and you know Adam Sandler. I'll tell you a funny story with Adam. Me and Adam did a a, a, Scrant, a Holiday Inn in Scranton, right? Adam played guitar. He was, you know, he he went on, and then I went on. And after the show, the owner brought us in the back and pulls out a big bag of coke. And he says, do you want Coke or money? And 
Adam took the money and I took the Coke and you see where his career is <laughs> and you see where my career is. Okay. <laughs> but I took it. Yeah. And so, oh, so I knew I had to go to rehab. I was going to rehab. Right. So I started smoking. Well, wait was, a second. What? Let's go to the beginning. You're from Jersey. You're how old now for real? How old am I? Yes. Like 65. It's amazing to me. I think you look great. Okay, I'm married. I, uh, Still. It's, it's 65, yeah. I think you look great. Oh, thanks. Um, Tell me about your upbringing and how you get well, on okay. drugs. Do you have older brothers? Did, what did you? Were you clean and sober up until comedy started hitting you with well, those one-nighters? Well, what happened was my gym teacher said too much teeth. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, as a kid... When you, here's the deal, and I don't want to get too deep. When you come from a broken home, like when I was young, you won't even know this. I used to come home from school in fourth grade and I would listen to uh, uh, this comedy album, uh, Von Meter, every day. He did the impressions of the Kennedys. It's called The First Family. It's fucking, they got shot and his career was done. <laughs> done. This guy was the number one. He was a two-trick pony. <laughs> this guy was the number one, had the number one selling album. Like they said, he went, he went He went. from Park Avenue to Park Bench. He went, he died in alcohol, a full-blown alcohol. Uh, and I used to come. Be it's it's I fucking, didn't what, what do you mean? I think Lenny Bruce walked on stage that night. Oh. God. I think Lenny Bruce walked on stage after the Kenny. I think he said, "Well, there goes Von Meter's career." <laughs> right? He was. I think that's the famous line he said. Uh, so I used to come home from school and listen because, and I didn't realize this till later in life. You know, I'm covering the pain of my parents' divorce. You know, I'm in fourth grade. Are you an only child? No, I had a, a brother who passed, and oh, my man. sister. Uh, my my sister's two years older. Fucking, okay. You know. So it's so and so growing up, and my mom. Well, to how old was your brother when he passed? Uh, probably about fifty-eight, okay. fifty-nine. Yeah, I mean, still uh, fucking young. And the thing, you know, he diabetic. He lost a leg, and still I'm paying full price for a casket. All right, <laughs> I'm paying. Okay, all right, and. This funeral, <laughs> the, the funeral, I love it. the funeral. Keep going, please no, don't mind me. Dude. The Keep funeral, going. fourteen thousand dollars. I'm paying. You know, I'm trying to save money. I'm like, can we do three feet? You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Look, look, he did one of his bits of fucking boat act. Anyhow, so you grow up doing negative shit. Negative attention is better than none. You don't know, you know, your mom's doing the best. She's working two jobs or one job and three kids, you know, and she's struggling. Like, what the fuck? She's a secretary, you know. Uh, luckily, we lived above my grandparents for okay, free. So they had a multifamily there. house. What age are you when your parents split? Oh, fourth grade or eight, okay, nine, so yeah, eight yeah, or yeah. nine. Uh, but I dressed like a 12 year old. Uh, <laughs> So I was eight or nine, and and you live with mom and his yeah. dad. Just so like dad would come peace, and, or would he around? Well, no, every like this is how Holidays fucked and shit. this is how fucked up parents are back then. They didn't have self help and all that shit. You know, you know. I I remember like my dad would come every couple two or three weeks, and and we stand away. Oh, daddy's coming, yeah. And then he come walking down the driveway and. Detectives would jump out of the bushes and arrest them. Nah, -uh, is that yes. real? You, yeah. you witnessed that? Yeah, yeah. No. So we were fucking Detec like, we were. You didn't bait. even know the detectives were in no, the bushes. No, <laughs> no, my mom. So, so well, that's crazy. You were bait. So we were bait. You know. So who's more fucked up? Him for not paying child support, or my mom you, oh, for using us that to go <laughs> set him up? I remember she. We took the bus all the way to New York from New Jersey. <laughs> To meet him at the Port Authority, detectives, boom. Uh, you've so seen you're thinking, it more than once. Oh, yeah, not the same ones. Yeah. <laughs> New York. You're like, hey, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
Unfortunately, life doesn't come with the user manual, so when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient and accessible anywhere, 100% online. You guys know I believe in therapy here. Um, you know, everyone's out there working out their bodies, and we got to work out those minds and those emotions and those feelings. So uh, therapy is always a good option, all right? As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it's affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. If things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash Honeydew. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Honeydew. If you didn't already know, 2022 has been one of the most difficult times to try buying your first home. But great news, 2023 is going to be the year of the first-time home buyer. With a recession, buyers have more power, less cutthroat competition, and homes are about to get more affordable. So if you haven't listened to the How to Buy a Home podcast, now is the perfect time. Since 2005, David has been the undisputed first-time home buyer authority. His How to Buy a Home podcast has helped so many listeners close on houses that they thought were impossible. David can guide you through the next steps that are right for you, whether you're planning to buy a home now or five years from now. He can even connect you with a great realtor in your town that works with first-time home buyers and actually cares about you. Plus, he just released a first-time home buyer starter kit at howtobuyahome.com. It's a free resource with all the knowledge you need to buy your first home. Start planning this holiday season at howtobuyahome.com and make this the last year you rent. Find How to Buy a Home on YouTube and wherever you listen to podcasts. Now, let's get back to the do. So, but now, like his, like when my first wife and I got divorced, we're good friends. Because I did the opposite of my parents with my kids. My mom did the best she could with the tools she had. <coughs> Sir, come on my chin. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, you know, you just learn, you do the opposite with your kids. My kids grew up, my kids are fucking great. So then, you know, you, but you you're grew doing, up a little like me. So then well, you're you doing had an extended negative. family a, a little bit, grandparents. Well, like I didn't get along with it. I was the black sheep. Okay. Our family was the black sheep. Like my cousins, their families, they had Hebrew school scholars, houses down the shore, and, you know, we're living free. We, so we were the black sheep, you know, during all the big family dinners at my grandparents, you know, my mom was kind of the butt of the jokes with. Like you know, I see, yeah. and I was the black sheep of the black sheep family. <laughs> Got it. You're the I black, black fuck, sheep. Yeah. I was the fucked up fuck. You know, my cousins were all honor roll students, college. I quit high school. You know, I started a business. Did you really? Yeah, I started my own. I had a good paint. I had the biggest painting business in town, but I did coke. You know, it's tough, and I was scared of heights. So, <laughs> uh, paint my house. I'll do the first floor. <laughs> You don't see no. This is true story. It's on my album. <laughs> Step ladder and below. Bro. <laughs> yes. That is it. <laughs> this is a. It's a true story. I owe drug deal everybody in t <laughs> everybody in town money. All drugs everywhere I go. Every Friday I would paint. I had an old Dodge pickup truck. I would paint it a different color with house paint. Nah, -uh. yes I no, did. You yes didn't. I did. <laughs> <laughs> there goes Voss. No, he had a red truck. <laughs> That's. That shutter green. <laughs> brush, brush paints on it. <laughs> Swear to God, I one week it was brown. I remember it was red. It was an old pink. Like, and it wasn't even semi gloss. It was a flat brown. Look at that. You know. So, so as you grow up doing doing negative shit, then you start hanging with the same type of kids that come from broken homes. You. You know, I go up in the neighborhood was, you know, my back street was all black people. It was, you know, and the front was like white people. So you grow up, you feel, I don't feel as good as them, or I don't feel like I belong with them. 
I feel a little better than I'm doing a little better than the dudes behind me. So you, that's who you hang out with. So you hang out, and then it grows into negative, whatever. It just escalates. What's you your know? first drug ever? Pot. And or no, age? alcohol. What Me age? and Rudy drank, his brother Pee Wee gave us a bottle of Thunderbird, and we drank Thunderbird one <laughs> How night. How old? Uh, shit, maybe Middle eighth school? grade. Eighth yeah, grade, yeah. maybe. Okay. And we, we threw up the next, me and Rudy were, you know, Pee Wee. And all the dudes, all, a lot of the dudes on my block all died of age from shooting dope. Heroin. Is that right? Back then, and, you know, I knew dudes, they were all in prison or shooting, you know. These are just the dudes on my block. And I only hung with some of them. The older guys were, you know, fucking cars ripping around the corner, guns, FBI, or, you know, they're chased. There was he my block was a lot of heroin dealing, heroin addicts. And we What's, were young. What, what area of Jersey? Plainfield. Plainfield, okay. So then you get older and you progress and you start doing this drug, that drug, and then next thing you know, you're smoking free base or crack. You whatever. got that far? Oh, yeah. Dude, I, let's go. All right. Well, so when's a, how old were you when you first did cocaine and how did you do it? Did you sniff it? It was on the tip. It? No, it was on the tip of this guy's dick. I, uh, <laughs> I might believe you. Though, <laughs> no. <dude>. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> so it was. You know, I don't know. Party with friends. I snorted. You know, we were snorting high drugs. School? So, like, is it uh, that early? No, nah, it's probably after high school. Right. We were doing like pot, acid. You know, going to concert, Drinking, New York right. Dolls. I saw them on acid and all. Uh, then twenty one. You know, I get real bad anxiety. I put myself in a hospital. They don't know what anxiety is back then. They really don't. They think you're just nuts and they feed you with Thorazine and how, you know, I'm doing a shuffle around the, every day, just shuffling around the fucking fifth floor of the fucking psych ward. I remember my friends came to see me. I go, we're going for our walk today. I can't have company. You know, I was so, yeah, and I have yeah. had anxiety my whole life. Uh, I get it now, even talking. When you talk, when I talk about myself deep like this, it, I get fucking major anxiety. Uh, so I, I'm suffering from anxiety. Then you just get older and you just, it progresses. Drug addiction progresses with certain people. If you have that addictive personality, you're addicted to instant gratification, you know, so... You know, you're snorting coke, you're partying, you're doing whatever. You're 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 dealing, and then you're fucking owing everybody money because you're doing all the product, and it's just a fucking night moving from house to house, painting that fucking truck. It's yeah, that truck stress. is gone. I that, mean, you're just fueling anxiety. Yeah, that, yeah. that business is gone. You know. Okay, at this point, that's gone. Yeah, I owe paint. I owe fucking paint distributors thousands, and this is back then. That's a lot. Of, that you is know, a lot. Uh. So when then, did you first free base? How old are you when you free base? Well, I was doing comedy. I started comedy. Mm -hmm. I was so bad in the beginning. So bad. I didn't know. I would just want to be a I, I I remember going to Catch a Rising Star a couple of times. I remember that place in the hotel. Was it a No, no, the oh. not the one in Princeton, the one oh, in gotcha. New York. Yeah. The real one. And I remember seeing uh Lenny Schultz. He did props. Crazy Lenny. I go, that's what I should do. I didn't, I just went to Toys R Us and bought it, and it was just horrible. It was horrible. Uh, I remember going on the first time. Oh, my God. My friend's band was playing. I went on. I just, it was just so bad. Then I did it. But then I started booking these rooms, one-nighters, in where I would host. Then other guys booking one-nighters, like in New York, Connecticut, we would trade. I'd say, you could do my gig, and I'd do their gig, so I'd get work. You know, and I might one-nighter. I mean, I had fucking top act. I remember having this headliner, Mulrooney, uh, Johnny, fucking great, and he brought his own middle, and the middle act is like, I don't know if you know this, but I work at the Rising Star. Uh, I go, well, yeah, you're making 60 bucks a night. <laughs> and and it, was, it was Richard fucking Jenny. Oh, wow, he was okay. opening for Mulrooney. <laughs> you know, okay. So I had all these, you know, and I would get work, and then it built and built. But then there's two. Now I'm starting a free base. I don't know how. 
Are you I taking saw, drugs instead of money also for payment and things like no, that? No, I'm just taking the money and going to buy drugs. And does are you keeping this quiet? Is no. this just a thing that you're doing? No, no. I'm doing it with other comics, okay. freebasing friends. And I, you know, I mean, car accidents. I mean, just a complete nightmare of drug addiction. Complete nightmare. And it when you wake up, is it immediate? Like, is it all day long? No, when I wake up, I'm like, fuck it. How am I going to get money to get high tonight? You know, it's just horrible. It's a horrible feeling. That next morning, uh... I mean, just nightmare stories after nightmare, car accidents, stealing, whatever. You know, probably the one of the lowest things. It's a gross story, but I was in a bar in New York. I had no money left. I have eighty cents, and I had forty cent drafts. I think I went in to have two drafts, and some girl comes up to me. She goes, "Oh, can I buy you a drink?" So I go sit at her table. And she goes, uh, can I buy you a drink? Oh, yeah. She goes, you got to go up and get it. And she handed me $20. And I walked up to the bar and just ran out the door and took it and went and bought two more vials of crack. You know, so it's two years or three years of just pure fucking drug addiction. Crack, Whatever. you got all the free way to crack. Well, and- crack is free base. Yeah. That's just a name. So I did you ever put a needle in your arm? Just only twice. I didn't like it. You did though. Yeah, twice. It, it wasn't my type of high. You know, I didn't like heroin. So, you know. So coke was your yeah drug of choice. Drug of choice. Uh, so I remember one night I smoked an eighth of coke about through it, and I'm ready to fucking. So I go up to uh, I go I got to go to rehab. So I go up to Fair Oaks. And I'm sitting in the waiting room. I had no issue. I knew nothing. And by the time they saw me, I came down. I said, oh, fuck, I left. So it was probably another half a year, a year of running. And then uh, I put myself in rehab. I remember the night before I was going to rehab, I called this booker, Gary Grant. He booked one-nighters. I said, uh, listen, I'm going to rehab tomorrow. I need to get high. Can you... And he gave me this one nighter. It was called BF Packies, a fucking nightmare. I did it, went to New York, bought five vials of Coke, f- smoked them. The next morning, my mother drove me to rehab, and I have not picked up a drug or a drink a day since. Yeah, I'm trying to do the math in my head. So if you're 65 and you've been clean and sober, 36, around 29, you're going. 28, yeah. Yeah, you're 20. going clean and sober. Yeah. So um, what's the closest to death? You've come in there, and that could be gun being we had, being I'd, robbed. I mean, oh, have no. you been robbed a bunch and shit? No, like, no, but I've had guns held. You know, yeah. I remember one night we were going to c- cop me and my friend, and he goes to steal like a vial or two from these, and they pull out guns. I go, hey, that was him, not me. <laughs> yeah, whoa, you know, I Kill had the him, keys. You got two, three extra vials. I had keys to front doors of buildings up in Spanish Harlem. I mean, we were in car. We were in a car accident once, where we took down a fucking light post. Eighty, miles. you know, I should have died there. Were you driving? No, no. And we all got out. And it was just hard. There's no airbags or anything back then. This was a Camaro. Yeah. I mean, this thing was going fucking, and we just spun. All the wheels are off the car. I mean, total. All of us should have died. Yeah, and no one did. No one. We all no. And I went back in later that night to New York. <sighs> I, I made three trips that night, and the next morning ended up in a hospital with a kidney stone. I didn't know what it was. And I think a couple of weeks after that is when I ended up in rehab. But close to death, every time you're getting high, you're close to death. Yeah, you cool. blow your fucking heart out, you know. So, you know. And I say this all the time, too, and I know I sound like an old white guy, but today, if you don't get clean and sober, you're going to die. That fentanyl is going to get you. It will oh, yeah. get you sooner or later. You, there's no way you could run for three, four years these days yeah. of cocaine or whatever and not get a hot shot. I feel like the odds it's are impossible. way against you. I mean, we're getting high every day smoking fucking coke. That's what like, I'm saying. Imagine, I, sooner or later you're going to get one. And I used to, you know, once in a while snort it, but like I said, it's like reading a book backwards. After you smoke it, people go, hey, you want some coke? If we weren't smoking it, I, I didn't really want it. You know, it's you that, get to, That's that much difference oh, of a high? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, anyhow, 
uh, I go to rehab. They said, you know, you can't do comedy for a year because the day I got to rehab, I did a show that night. I got booked. And I just haven't, you know, my desire to stay clean is much stronger. I mean, right now I have enough money in life. I would die. This watch. I sell this watch. I'm dead. You know what I mean? I got to. I didn't have any money then. And I got a family. I and got what fucking, you would sell that watch for back then is not what you would sell it for today either. No. You'd be pawning that shit off for yeah, $100. Yeah. Well, let's not get crazy. A <laughs> <laughs> hundred dollars I'll let you wear it for a day, motherfucker. <laughs> wear it around. <laughs> Call you up. Where's my watch? <laughs> time's up. <laughs> I want I want a fucking watch time's up. So, and then, you know, I started, I remember in the beginning, like, I mean, I just, I was working for a guy once and he was evicted out of his house. Mm -hmm. So he was staying at a hotel. Uh, he had all his shit in his hotel room. So I get off stage and I say, he doesn't have my money. So I go in his hotel room, I took his TV <laughs> they had still not the hotel TV, his yeah, TV. Yeah. and I go home and my ex wife is like, What are you working for? A microwave next week? You know, I have so many. When well, you start comedy, I remember one time What's we drove the scariest, scariest, scariest drug deal transaction. Like, well, we were in New York, you've never one been end. jumped all those times. You've never been jumped. No, man, no, I knew how to carry myself. I, you know, plus I was. I was a good buyer. They didn't want to, you know, one time, and this is a true story. I mean, I put this on. Maybe you. back then it was different because I feel like nowadays when you oh, come down yes. to those neighborhoods now and they know a white dude in these neighborhoods, you're you're going to get everything. To, you're not getting your drugs. Your money's gone, and you yeah. might get out of there well, with your I, life. I, you know, I uh, one time was with a, somebody would go, we're with this, uh, another drug guy. He goes, look, I got a shotgun. Let's go rip off some drug dealers. And we were this close. We would have got killed. Yeah. Because they have no lookouts. They have, there's no way we would. And then I said, you know what? This ain't going to work. You know, and we were at that point where we were going to. But that's how deep in the addiction you are. You're well, considering. You're, you're, you're yeah. considering. Right. You're yeah. going, well, he's got a shotgun. You know, we'll go. And But everywhere you go to buy those places up in Harlem, Spanish Harlem, they got lookouts. You can't. You're not going in there with a shotgun. They all have so you just crazy things in your head. You know what I mean? Uh, one night I go, oh, maybe I'll be a male prostitute, and I sit on a corner for about seven minutes, and I go, hey, this ain't, it's not my career. <laughs> <laughs> I just pick any corner. I'm sure there was a corner where they all hung, but I go, I wouldn't even know what to do. <laughs> hey, can you just give me the money and I owe you? Uh, so I quit. You know, just stuff goes through your head. You're so high, <clears throat> but. You know, it's... But you're a one-and-done rehab. Yeah. That's rare, too. Oh, it is. A lot. I mean, I sit here on this show and listen to people sit across from me, and they tell me how they've failed rehab time and time again. So to go once and then not a fuck-up... Well, because... In I mean, decades, I think it's one in 33. Than, one in 33 last. Right. Something like that. You know... It, it, you're an well, outlier, bro. Well, it's because... Yeah, what was, it was it? I didn't want to die or go to jail. And that's, there was, there's only three endings, jail, institution, or death. There's, there's no good ending, you know, and I, I, I talk to people, I see people, well, I only do it this day or that day or it's whatever. And you can't, and this is all 12 step sayings, but you can't, carry an attic you can carry the message you know so your ego's not your amigo yeah all that, that shit one, yeah. there's so well, much shit. that one right there hits me hard well and i only let my ego drive in the car with me now yeah. you know what i mean <laughs> outside the car we just shut the fuck up uh, egos easing got out uh fear false evidence appearing real there's so much shit you and i'm not some fucking 12 step uh zombie you know I take what I want and leave the rest behind or take what I need. Now, does Bonnie drink or anything like yeah, that? Yeah, she has drink, yeah. In front of you, too? And are you okay? Yeah. And how is that for you? 
She's not I always fucking, wonder. She's not selling pussy to get high. <laughs> <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's got it. <laughs> That's a great answer. <laughs> That's, That's a great answer. answer. You know, she uh, <clears throat> You know, she has one drink. She can't. Uh, she, two drinks, she's out. She has one drink, and it never. Well, my, my question is, it doesn't. That doesn't entice you to be like, well, let no. me have a sip of that one no. or something like that. No, I mean, listen, I, I'm an addict. I gamble. You know, I play lotteries, which I got to get in check. I, I mean, I've always gambled since fourth grade. Roulette. <laughs> What'd you gamble on in fourth grade? We played roulette. Yeah, and we pitched quarters, and you know, whatever. I stopped gambling for 10 years and then also I went back and it's, you know, uh, my problem is a lot of numbers. I hear and I just, and like I was in the casino, if I shoot, I step over a naked body to shoot craps. There's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing more exciting than shooting fucking dice. Let me tell you, when that table's hot, the head of the clan is high-fiving Farrakhan. <laughs> When the dice table's hot, let me tell you, there's no feeling like a hot dice table. Fuck that. Get get Megan Fox away from me. I'm trying to fucking hit a hard eight. <laughs> so, but it's weird because I've been to casinos recently where I worked and I'm there for the whole week and Monday night I win like 500 and I don't gamble the rest of the week. I go, well, I'll leave with 500. I'll pay for my golf, you know, and, but there's times where I'm going, you know, hiding money in my room i don't bring my credit card you know i'm back and forth up and down so it's just addiction to instant gratification yeah to it it's addiction is drugs alcohol food stand up all of it stand up, is just a symptom of yourself right sex it's just, all of it it's yeah. just a symptom a symptom of are you burying something? Are you addicted to instant gratification? Or, look, that's why stand up is so different than acting. Cause and you're podcasting getting, too. Yeah. I mean, I get this with you now. Yeah. This doesn't come out for a minute, and you know, you forget sometimes what you even talked about with people because we're yeah. doing so many of these things. We're doing stand up every fucking night, every weekend. Yeah. But that that good or bad, you're getting an instant fucking hit. Yeah. In front of that. You crowd. don't get that acting. Mm -mm. People go to me. Uh, yeah, hell, your movie might not come out for a fucking year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It takes a long time to get a movie out or anything. Yeah. yeah. People go, oh, you can't act. Bitch, I'm a comic. I'm, yeah, it's like telling a brain surgeon you can't do root canal. I didn't <laughs> study acting. I fucking do comedy anywhere. Yeah. I could do comedy fucking sleeping down on my couch, wake up and do a set, you know. Uh, and I can semi act. You know, if especially if I could ad lib, if you can ad lib, I'll fucking knock the scene out the box. Yeah, if I can just be me, I'm good. Yeah. If I got to be anything else, yeah. I'm not. If good. I got to read lines, yeah. I can't remember them. <laughs> yeah. I, can't. I can't read them anymore. <laughs> so, you know, and I, I, my comedy career is fucking great. I'm at the like I've already won. You know what I mean? I see. You know, we're talking about all these comics doing crowd work on online. And this isn't ego. This is just bare. And besides me, and I, I've named this on my new album. I'm one of the best at crowd work in this business, hands down. But there's other, good, you know, Big J, uh, Attell, Bonnie's great. At Andrew it. Schultz is Schultz. great. Rick Ingram's yeah, great. Yeah, Jimmy Brogan from back in the day was, you know, there's a lot of good. So, but I did on my new album, uh, my impression of bad crowd work guy. You know, okay, yeah. And I like where you're from. Oh, I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no jokes. How long? How long are you married? Eleven years. Whoa, almost twelve. <laughs> so I do it. I close out my new album with Bear Crowd Work Guy. But now you'll see on you know, especially in New York, a lot of these they expect crowd work because they see so much of it online. And I could do an hour. I could do an hour of complete crowd work. Believe me. I, you know, I've done it on second shows where I'm going, I don't feel like doing material, you know, and, you know, and it's not packed. My fucking career. I, I bring my own curtain to shows now. <laughs> <laughs> I, bring, <laughs> I stink. I, uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <I> went, <laughs> oh. You fucking kill me, dude.
Tis the season to indulge. But if you don't want to get so high you go to the moon, let Daggrass help you chill out and enjoy the ride. Their classic pre-rolled joints, hemp flour, tinctures, and gummies are the perfect replacement or pair to that glass of mulled wine or third helping of pie. Daggrass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints and flour are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy the effects of CBD while keeping a clear head. And now they offer a variety of products so you can toke or dose just the way you like. From their CBD tincture drops to the newly launched CBD gummies and flavors like classic blackberry ginger, good time hibiscus lime, and nighttime midnight berry, you can chill out without getting stoned. And Daggrass didn't forget your furry friends. They also release CBD dog bones so everyone in the house can enjoy. All Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over, and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. Whether you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Daggrass will leave you in a euphoric mood. Right now, Daggrass is offering my listeners 20% off your first order when you go to daggrass.com slash honeydew. Go to daggrass.com slash honeydew for 20% off your first order. That's daggrass.com slash honeydew. This week, I've got Lamar throwing for more than 180 yards. I got Mahomes rushing for more than 40, and I got Aaron Rodgers throwing for under 300 yards. Prize picks format is simple, and it's easy to understand, so even if you aren't a sports fanatic, you can still play and have fun. Pick two to five players, and if they will score more or less than their prize picks projection. You can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're never competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. There are projections for any sports you watch. NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, you name it, it's all there. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. They're safe and fast withdrawal, and it's currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with your promo code HONEYDO. All right. So if you deposit $100, Prize Picks is going to give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price picks gonna give you fifty. Don't forget to enter promo code Honeydew at sign up for an instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Now, let's get back to the do. So, all right, wait. Know. I have a. I want to ask you all questions. Right. Look, I have a daughter. She's about to turn eight. Um, you have uh, how many kids? Three. Three daughters. All daughters. Yeah. No sons. No. Okay, so you have a. How old your oldest? Thirty two. All right, so 32 is from your first wife. Yes, yes. Her, my first two, 32 first two. and 30, yeah. 32 and 30. So were you, you had just got clean and sober then for a few years, right? I think I had like. So they never saw dad during no, addiction. Never. Okay. No. And now your youngest is how old? 15. All right. So She's fucking great. As a dad of where you've been three fucking times. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you a question because we were just, it's so funny, I just. Took my daughter. We're from. I'm from Baltimore originally. I went back to visit my cousins in Ocean City, Maryland. Right. I'm Dude, I was just down there. Working. Really? Yeah. So we fly into Philly and we got the two hour drive down to Ocean City. Right. And yeah. a good friend of mine had come to see me that I've known since. I mean, we're in sixth grade. And his daughter unfortunately got a hot shot and she died from fentanyl. So, no. Yeah, How old? Twenty three, twenty four. It's fucking horrible. Eh? Um. So I'm talking to him and he's you know he's emotional and everything and my daughter sees it you can't you can't hide that so on the drive back to the airport she asked me dad what was he crying about what what happened to his daughter and i was like you know what you can either bullshit her now or you can fucking just straight up be real with her and i chose to be real and i was yeah. like i'm gonna tell you what happened and i explained what drugs are i told her what fentanyl is because I, I i think there was a kid it might have been the middle school here in Santa Monica where um, some kid took a Percocet from a parent's some something, a street perk, and it killed him. It was hot. So 
I told her about fentanyl. Why would per, a parent be fentanyl? Well, I don't know. I don't know if it really was at yeah. the parents' house. I don't know where yeah. they got it, but they it got it matter. somewhere. Yeah. And it killed this kid, and it's all over. So I'm thinking, you're, you're going to be there in two, three years. Yeah. So I explained what fentanyl was. I explained drugs. I explained what marijuana was and alcohol. And, you know, I, I down-talked the whole scary marijuana shit. I was like, yeah. listen, of all the things out there, that's the one, you know, she knows I smoke it. She knows the neighbors smoke it. She knows everybody. She goes, sees the stores, the billboards out here. You can't fucking hide weed yeah. out here from your kids. So how did you talk to your kids about it? Were you real with them about it? Do, do they, well, obviously now well, they probably I, know your stories. Well, I took my, my older daughters. They used to go to meetings with me. Okay. Because I had them in the day. So they, you know, they would play in the. Uh, kids room or whatever you know and they both grew up with like asthma so you know they just knew I was an ex-drug addict and you know and you know they saw at meetings that they never saw me high or drunk so subconsciously they got to think you know he's a good dad good life He's not drinking or getting high. So something subconsciously, you know, my kids grew up, they drank. They weren't, you know, full-blown alcoholics. You know, they partied. They were fucking college kids. Yeah, they're going to do what kids do. Yeah, sure. they're college kids. Uh, so I never had a, well, I remember I have a video of my little daughters. Oh, it's so cute. They were probably six and four. It's on tape. And I would, I sat them on the couch and I would ask them questions. I go, if a stranger pulls up to you, what do you do? They go, run, run. I go, what if he says he has a puppy? Run, run, you know. And there might have been some drug questions, you know. And uh, they're so cute. We run, daddy, run. Call the police, you know. So, and and when my daughter now, I mean, I leave it all up to Bonnie. I bailed. Uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's no, yours. I, just, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I'll take her to fucking Walmart. Yeah, wait, you hold know? on. She's, She's 15, 15 and 30. So 15 years you've been out of the game, man. You were almost out, out, huh? Yeah. Well, she, oh God, she's so funny and cute. She's just, I mean, she's beautiful. She's smart. And I I try to tell her, you know, because she's really, I'll, I'll show you a picture later. Uh, you know, I always try to say, you're smart before you're beautiful. I always try so, to say, you know, I don't want them. To, I'm sorry about that. All three. <laughs> yeah. So I, I always try to. I, first thing I do too, yeah. it's never pretty first, yeah. ever. Yeah. I am going to battle that fucking, you need to look good for a man or society yeah, fuck fucking that. bullshit. Be fucking I, smart. She, I wish I hung out with the nerds in school. Yeah. You know, I was a I was an athlete, hung out with the jocks. These nerds yeah. are coding shit and making billions of dollars. <laughs> yeah, you know I was what a I mean? drug like, addict. <laughs> I don't have any of it. <laughs> yeah. Man, be smart. I, I'm with you on that. Good so, for you. So, you know, she'll leave the house with this low I go, you got to change your shirt. I mean, she doesn't, but I tell her, you got to change, you know, put on makeup. And, you know, I mean, she went from, you know, a piece of plywood to like a woman. You know, I'm like, she's 15. She hangs out with all her friends and they have sleepovers. You know, she has a good network of friends or good girls. Uh, and Bonnie the other day is like, how come she doesn't have a boyfriend? Yeah, I don't care. You know, did your other daughters have boyfriend? What, yeah, God, what ages did they first have boyfriends uh, that you were one, aware of? At least, I think the f oldest was seven. What? And, no, oh, oh God, God damn, no, dude. No. My daughter did tell me she no. has a crush on a boy. <laughs> yeah, and I was they like, do. They have fuck. crushes. No, I don't know. Teenagers, whatever. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, How, what's the first time you, someone was brought home to meet you? Well. Is it like a homecoming? I don't or? know. My daughter's getting married. She called when she started dating this guy. She okay. was scared to tell me. Like she goes, you know, I'm dating this guy and he's black. And right? And <laughs> I did, like, is, he, is that real though? Yeah, oh, I yeah, he I'm, fuck around so much. Yeah, he's light skinned. He uh <laughs> I don't know, so but she thought I was gonna be mad. I grew up in an all <coughs> in an all diverse neighborhood. You know, I mean, I've done every urban TV show. I go, why would I be mad about that? If he's good, he's good to you, a good person. 
you know, I don't care. The, the white dudes you went out with were fucking assholes. Yeah, exactly. I go, those guys were assholes. Fucking white garbage. Yeah, they yeah. were garbage. One dude, you know, I mean, one was cool. Her boyfriend before that was cool. He was a good golfer. He was cool. <laughs> and the one before him was a fuck up. I mean, a complete fuck up. So I don't care. I mean, you know, my other daughter who married this guy, you know, white dude, as was, as white as white can be, you know, red hat white, uh, you know, fucking, ugh, he's just, he went to like some Ivy League college, you know, I'm like, ugh, you're just, just a perfect jaw, you know, that fucking jaw is white, it's like a, a jaw. A white jaw. <laughs> jaw is white. It's like the kind of jaw that rejects fucking minorities for a, for a fucking car loan. <laughs> you know, you go in for a car loan, you look at that jaw and go, we don't have a shot. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I just started that. <laughs> it's fucking, oh, oh, you just want to punch him in his fucking waspy fucking banker jaw. Your son-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, and the other dude is cool. The one yeah, he's yeah. Like, he plays ball. You know, we'll talk Jordan sneakers. You know, uh, you know, and as long my daughter's my the one who's getting married. She has a townhouse in a real nice fucking area in Jersey. They bought a house in Tampa where they Airbnb it. They're getting ready to buy another house. This kid's 32. She's going to have three fucking houses. You know what I mean? Yeah, hell They're yeah. You're doing good. well. My yeah. other daughter lives in, she bought a fucking, a $750,000 house. Her and her, her and her fucking job husband, all right? Had a baby, just had a baby. You know, and these are my... You know, I was fucking, this is all too, you know, from telling jokes. Right. From going on stage. That's right. You know, uh, you know, I got to do a speech at my daughter's wedding, you know, in two weeks. I, I just, I, I just can't offend anybody. I know how I am, you know, because there's going to be a mixed audience, you know, and I'll start doing crowd work, you know. <laughs> At my, God, if you do crowd work, <laughs> I just, I just, well, my daughter's first wedding, right, the night before at the rehearsal dinner, his father gave a speech, you know. He came with slides of them, you know, together going up. He had a whole fucking presentation. So I didn't, I just went up at my daughter's wedding. I go, first of all, I'm not like this fucking boat act, all right? And I didn't prepare. Boat act. <laughs> I call him a boat act or whatever. I don't know. I go, him and his dumb slides. I'm sure, I'm, I go, I'm surprised he didn't do magic, <laughs> right? I'm just trashing him and I moved on. But then I'll write some bullet points, but it comes from here. Just like comedy. To me, look, there's great comics. But to me, good comedy comes from the heart, not the head. Mm -hmm. Like you, well, it starts with the heart, and you polish it with the head. Yeah, yeah. no, but there's joke the tellers. Gut. Yeah, you're right. When you leave a show, for me, mm -hmm. like I love all comedy. Don't get me wrong. My favorite, you know, I love Maria Banford. I love fucking Stano. You know, I love Alter Regan. You know, from up and down. But when you leave a show, to me, I'd rather know something about that person. You know, you could leave someone's show and go, what'd they say? I don't know, but he was funny. Right. But you leave a show and go, wow, what a life. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you, uh, so, you know, it's all different. And like someone like Maria Bamford, you, you just know she's very, she's out of her fucking mind. Right. She's so good. Mm -hmm. she's you know, great. and same with Stanhope too. He'll take a bit and go, uh, you know, in complete circle and you go, holy fuck. He does a bit about a third world guy going to a fucking American prison. This is as funny as anything I've ever heard. <laughs> it's probably, as yeah, anything yeah. I've ever, it's so funny in your thing. Or Patrice, when me and Patrice, yeah. me and Patrice were, were good friends. We'd hang out and when you made him laugh, it was so electrifying when you said something and there was no better feeling to make. I'd made Patrice laugh where he fell on the ground. 
you know, it, it's so electric. And he's made me, you know, me and Patricia were walking down the street when I was giving him a ride home. And uh, <laughs> you just said me and Patrice were walking down the street one night. I was giving him a well, ride. No, home. I gave oh, him a okay. ride home. Okay. And then we're walking down to his, you know, God, we get yeah. walking to his house. And he looks at me and goes, I don't have a fucking thing going on in my career. Nothing. And I go, I don't have an agent, a manager, nothing. And we just both started cracking up, <laughs> laughing. Yeah. Like, you know, we, we, we did an audition, me and him, for the two leads in a sitcom. So we're auditioning for Marcy Phillips, the head of casting for ABC, nicest lady in the world. And we're up there. And I can't act, and he doesn't want to be there. So he won't take his face out of the copy. And we're trying, and she's yelling at me. I go, How the fuck can I connect with a guy that won't look at me? And we're, I'm trashing him. He's going, Fuck you. And this, and then she goes, Can you two just leave? Wow. <laughs> and really? We, and we just <laughs> walked down a hallway laughing. We just blew, and, he, and we, we just started laughing. It's so funny to us. And we're walking down the hallway, and there's three executives behind us. And I didn't mean to, but I farted. And he fell on the ground laughing so hard because the executives were all fucking like, oh. Uh, you know, there's certain comics like that that laugh. Like when you do, when I do radio with Gervais, Ricky, his laugh is so oh, electrifying. Yeah. He loves comics. Yeah. He's and, one of my favorites. And no he'll doubt. laugh. Like if you say something funny, like there's no ego. Yeah. And you could trash him too. You could, you know, he's going to trash you. you. He's just like hanging with the dudes. And that's how our crew was in New York. We were fucking brutal. Me, Patrice, Norton, uh, Keith Robinson, Bobby Kelly. You know, Kevin Hart started with our crew. Mm -hmm. Bill Burr. We were all fucking ruthless. We beat Billy down one night at the cellar so bad. He came in. He came in all, and we're all sitting there. And he goes, I'm going to the World Series. The Yankees were playing the Mets. He goes, I'm going to the World Series. And we're like, how do you get tickets? He goes, I'm doing a show on these guys hired me to do a show on their bus to the game. And for 45 minutes, we fucking did. <laughs> Sweat was pouring down his face. Patrice, we did. Like, we were doing stuff like. You guys were a good crowd. And then we were, <laughs> walking like, down walk there. Off, walking <laughs> off the bus. And Patricia, like, once he said that, like, our eyes lit up because we go, here's oh my a God, fucking here's, victim. Yeah. Victim. Uh, and we had so much fun. And then Patrice, you know, one night, the closest we came to, I mean, Kevin, I walked in one night with a little bump on my lip and everybody's yelling, Voss has herpes. And they're yelling it. In top of the cell, everybody's here and they're banging the table. Voss has herpes, you know, fucking dumb little Kevin Hart with his little hands bouncing on the fucking table. You know, Voss has herpes, and now he's not, not you know. Uh, the closest we came one night, we we're sitting in the cellar, and who's the nicest guy in the world? Russell Peters walks in, he's done the show, yeah, and he, he has this, you know, what a pea coat is, mm -hmm. you know, the navy coat. Yeah. But he has one up to his waist. Okay. It's a waist. And yeah. he's walking in with his crew. And we look at his coat. And we just, me, Keith, and it's just nonstop. And Bonnie goes, you look like the little boy on Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> <laughs> and we just, like, so nobody with his crew would laugh. But we were, he came in the next night fucking just firing off shit at us. That's he great. he yeah. came in and he goes, fuck these guys. And and the nicest guy in the world. And just be, so we had like our table in the back of the cellar. You know, it was in the dock, the Patrice dock. They talk about it. We were fucking Ruth, but it was fun. We were so funny. We were like just comics having fun. Then we leave there. And a lot of nights it would be me, Patrice, Keith Robinson, and Jim Norton would stand in front of Boston Comedy Club and just trash each other till three or four in the morning. And it was the most fun and the best times in comedy you could have. Like now, we were, I was sitting at the table and there was some young kid, he said something, and I trashed him and he went, what's that about? I go, what? What's that about? Shut the fuck up. It's a trashing, you dummy. You know, they're so thin skinned and so, you know, and I don't think LA is like New York. I don't, people don't sit around beating each other up. 
like it's we do. It's not. It's not it's like not. that here. I'm an East Coast guy. Yeah. It's not. I, so I, we grew up, hey, asshole was just a, a polite way to get someone's yeah. attention. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was never. It was all ball buster. It was all who you, you just, I want to make you cry. Like, you want to make you cry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you'd be like, yeah, hey, I'm sorry, man. When he goes around. If I'm fucking with you. <laughs> It's so funny. If I'm fucking with you, that means I like you. Yes, I'm that spending I, time on you I, right now. So many yeah. MCs yeah. on the road, you know, I'll go, do you have my number at the end of the week? And they go, no. And I go, good, and walk away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. I go, you see me in New York, don't act like you know me. <laughs> right? <laughs> don't act like we're buddies. All right. Oh, but shit. also, I'm not an asshole. Like, if so many of them, can, can, I, can I sell merch? And I always say yes. I'm not one of these headlines. You can't. Of course, they don't make any fucking money. You know? So, it was so much fun throughout the career. Now, it's different. This is what I want to ask you a question. How, how many years in comedy were you using? How many years were you doing comedy? Just three actually, years. Three years. Two or three, three years. How long do you think you could have kept that up while in comedy? I would have died. You would have died. I would have got shot or a car accident or went Why to jail. Why do you jail. think shot? Just from having I would have put myself in a position somewhere, try to rip somebody off or did... Like, I was... I was working in uh, Boston. I met a, this is when I was, a waitress, beautiful. And I go, can you get Coke up here? She go, we drove from Boston to New York. I spent all my money. We got a hotel room, did Coke all night. So I, and she said, uh, my sister wants an ounce of Coke. Can you get in here? And I would have ripped her off. In my head, just, I would have ripped her off easily. Three years later, I'm working in Florida, and that sister's in the audience with her monster boyfriend. Nah. So if I would have ripped her off, you know, she, I mean, and she came up to you and told you, "I'm the." I don't know. She goes, "Oh yeah, you met my whatever." Mm -hmm. So nothing good would have happened if I would have kept doing it. It's not like, you know, oh, I'm a crack addict, I'm hitting lottery. <laughs> they see, there's no good ending. Yeah, you're right. There's, there's no good. There's ending. no good ending. There's no. You don't fucking get a trophy you know uh that's so, institution or incarceration or jail. Fucking it was right one of those that. three so luckily i stopped when i stopped because the progression was out of control and thank god i didn't ha wasn't making money doing comedy you know i would go on the road and mc for 125 dollars for the week it probably yeah. cost me 50 to fly then yeah. i would All go right, let me ask you this you battle addiction, so you've beat the alcohol, drug, substance. You've beat substance, but you say you, gambling's a here and there, it's an issue. Yeah. What do you do to fucking center yourself, to really actually check yourself? Uh, what do you mean by, like... Well, I, I mean, like, if you are ever well, think I mean, that maybe you're doing too much gambling or whatever, like, you obviously, you have a, an ability to reset yeah. yourself or self-check. Like, what do you do? Does it just uh, hit a point where well, you I finally go, go, hey, enough of this fucking shit? Or, well, you, you know. I mean, you don't look like you meditate. Maybe you do. No, I don't. I don't know. I, 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 okay. All right. All right, fucking Gandhi. I, uh, like, I don't. <laughs> meditate. Shut your mouth. I, uh, no, my wife, like, I got 30, uh, 36 years clean, and meditation is a big. I don't meditate. I don't know how. And I, I'll go by the my wife's room and she's meditating. And, and I, I'm jealous that my wife, you know, her career's taken off. She tries to, she had the best analogy. You know, she goes, you know, think. She goes, because I have a, a, a lot of times my power of thinking, things happen for me when I do it. Mm -hmm. It's for some reason. I, she goes, just think. She goes, if you want to be a millionaire, you'll be one, right? And then I said to her, uh, God gives you what you need, not what you want. She said, you think Chelsea Handler really needed a TV show? <laughs> she sat down your my God, theory. Yeah. Right now. There's, your, There's God. your fucking God. Yeah. Uh, I do got to start meditating. I do. I think... So what is it you I do I try that... to disconnect from it is play golf. Okay. So when All I'm right, out there, there four and a half hours, four hours, 
I, I'm as disconnected with this Are you business. gambling on the game, though? No, once in a while, me and my friends will play $5. Here. But I usually I go by myself, and they put me with three people or whatever, oh, gotcha. and they ask me what I do for a living. I tell them I'm an FBI profiler. <laughs> And I just bullshit my way through that, you know, or whatever. Because I read a couple of John Douglas books back when I used you to could read. Be someone new every time. Yeah, if they don't know who you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, back when yeah, I used, I used to, read. to read. <laughs> <laughs> you know, back in the day. So, uh, I guess getting away is playing golf, or when I'm doing yard work. I had my for three years. I ended season three of landscaping with Rich, which I did. Uh -huh. on. What? Dude, I had this idea for a show years ago. I was trying to pitch where it's called I'll Cut Your Grass. Yeah. Because I'd be on the road meeting people at the meet and greet. They're like, well, it's so cool what you do. It's so cool. I'm like, what do you do? And they're like, no, nah, tomorrow I'm just cutting the grass. I'm like, do you know how much I would love tomorrow to just go fucking get on a ride mower and cut the fucking grass? Oh. And I wanted to do a give back show where – um you know, maybe it's a woman who has breast cancer and she has to go get her chemo. And, you know, the house is a single mom in the yard. I'm going to come cut your grass oh, while I you, you go. I you break in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw you shaking it. I'm a big eye. Like, yeah, Robert. <laughs> no, yes. I'm come cut your grass. Man. That's a good. Yeah. You know what I mean? You go, you're go. you single dad and you haven't been with the kids or whatever it is. Go take your kids out and have a good time. I'll cut your grass. See, that's funny. I did three seasons of Landscaping with Rich. But if you look it up. <clears throat> I would say what I'm going to do, okay, Tam, I'm going to put in, you know, uh, 40 Arborvati's. And then, you know, I say, hey, welcome to Landscape and Rich, and this is today's project. You're going to be with me all along the way. We're going to get this done together. And and then I would just show at the end the finished product. I wouldn't show them me doing anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would just be a picture of the Arborvati's fucking planted so i never did anything but i always set it up what i right, was doing yeah. but all the deer in my neighborhood i have an acre of property i planted 18 36 arbor bodies or the deer ate them they all they're sickly so then in the front i took them out and put in the front 20 out i put big rocks out front of my house you know how they later mm -hmm. then i put between them uh, 20 Alberta spruce and we had a drought and a heat wave and they're all dead they're brown dead and I ended season three I go listen it was a great season but everything's dead <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap it's a wrap I'll see you next year all right look first of all thank you for coming on here and talking about this I told I, I don't know how I got into the whole us and our crew and Patrice I always end up talking about that because that was my favorite time yeah. in the business you know and we're in a tough business yeah we are and and yeah that's the moments that matter you know, yeah I love doing I love doing stand up I love creating you know and if I was getting high I wouldn't have any of I wouldn't have my family I wouldn't have comedy I wouldn't get a free fucking free Ryan mug Sickler there, mug. Yeah, man. Uh, you don't know this. I'm going to use it tonight. I can't wait. Uh, and so I, I I go off in tangents, and I'm sorry if I did. It's well, all I'm not good. sorry. No, I'm not yeah, sorry. This I'm is not your sorry. episode, dude. Yeah, uh, this oh, is what I want to ask you, though. I told you yeah, at the beginning off mic. Let's start over. I <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you uh, advice you would give to your 16-year-old self. And it's interesting because that's you a couple of years into just drinking maybe and doing some smoking some pot. And you know it's about to come your way in a few years. What advice would you tell yourself? Try not to come so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it's only pussy. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I bet you. No, I bet you nine out of ten people go buy Apple, buy Microsoft. Buy no, they really yeah, don't. They oh. after an episode like this, they yeah. they really do look back. I guess and be like, the man, advice I, mean, I would give to myself don't is fuck around with cocaine. But no, I would probably say, uh, be more grateful, enjoy what you have in life. I go, you know. Don't compare, identify, and just be more grateful. 
Dude, that's great, great advice. Great. Don't compare, identify, and grab. I'm, I'm on this gratitude yeah. thing right you now, know, big time, too. Because yeah. we're in a business where you're like, what the fuck, you know? And also, listen, at the end of the day, none of this fucking matters. It doesn't. It, it listen, doesn't. You got your family. You got your health. None of this fucking I am, matters. But I don't you got like grandkids. Them. You got a son-in-law you don't <laughs> yeah. like. But whatever. He's got you a great know? jaw alignment. You know what I'm no, saying? No, but it's true. I've been in a business. And I have a minor speech impediment. My SHs. I fucking made a career out of talking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I followed Chris Spencer last night. I had no problem. <laughs> no, <laughs> he killed. Uh, yeah. Just have... I have more gratitude. That's great. Be grateful. Um, uh, plug and promote everything again, please. Uh, our podcast is uh, My Wife Hates Me. It's wherever they, f you know, podcasts are played. Uh, my album, Va Rich Voss 7, should be out two or three weeks, four weeks on iTunes or wherever. Special uh, uh, Rich Voss Anonymous will be on, in November it's coming out, on all streaming, you know, like Pluto, Roku, all that shit. Uh, my manager's coming out with a whole new streaming. Uh, I don't even understand this. Uh, uh, I forget the name of it. Anyhow, uh, it's going to be everywhere. And you know what? I don't, uh, whatever. I, I'm not a, uh, just, if you, uh, Look, here's my advice. If you're at a podcast and there's a dish of candy, take some. Load up. You got Load that up mug loaded, bro. <laughs> got, get some candy. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> no. thank you for coming on for real. This was Thanks great. Thanks for having me. Um, as always, Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week.